verifying America Mafia Roxel Nation. This is massive. Four horrifying facts about the America Mafia. Before we can start the video, I would like to encourage all of you to watch the video until the end and share your personal opinion in the comment section down below about four horrifying facts about uh, the American Mafia. This will help us create an amazing and vibrant community on YouTube. Thank you. Number one, drug gangs are basically fast food franchises. In the world of legitimate businesses, branding is important. It helps create repeat customers, allowing you to diversify in the strength of prior success and supports growth effort. In the world of organized crime, the parallel law enforcement system rely more on brute strength and fear than on the nuance of trademarks, copyrights and patents. However, there is one model that has managed to take both markets by storm. The franchise. Franchising is essentially a model for growth through duplication. The same product under the same name, made in the same way by the same supplier, sold accordingly to a standardized pricing structure, bleeding local entrepreneurship with centralized authority. Your neighborhood McDonald's, for example, is locally owned and operated by trains all staff according to corporate standards, gets all products from a central corporate supplier and has generously the same menu everywhere, with price, specials and offerings subjected to board region varieties. Number 2. Organized crime has lots of legitimate businesses and investment. American organized crime came into the post-prohibition scene in the middle of the 20th century with a lot of money to spend. <laughs> like any good company that has successfully exploited its niches, this meant it was time to diversify. Besides, sidelining into hard drug, human trafficking, murder for hire and other main mainstays of the underworld, the various factions and families saw some lucrative opportunities in the above board investment as well. A particularly uh, precinct bootlegging gang known as the Broadway Mab uses connection and money during the prohibition era to acquire several speakeasies and clubs, as well as apartments and theaters. Besides giving them control of both sides of the equation where alcohol was concerned, it left a steady revenue stream in from and rent payments and real estate appreciation even after prohibition was repealed. The brains behind the investment heavily approach to managing mob money was Arnold Rothstein, who used his influence and capital for everything from financing Broadway plays to fixing the 1919 World Series, and even according to rumors arranging to have a space for zero added to roulette wheels, giving the house a nudge up in the ads. 3. They use prison to train and recruit members. Prison gangs were becoming a microcosm and organized crime itself. Initially, gangs form in prison for the same reason they form on the street, to provide protection, community, and a narrow hit to manage scarce resources. Just, But just as organized crime grew and evolved in the wake of prohibition, and on the shoulders of the war and drugs, so have prison gangs evolved into a much more sophisticated and influential enterprise. Today, prison gangs aren't just a protection racket for the inmates, but for the guard, staff and very institution in which they operate. Prison overcrowding has become so extreme that the gangs are often more responsible for maintaining order than anyone on the outside. Whether inmates enter the system already affiliated with a gang or are recruited following their incarceration, membership is virtually mandatory as a matter of survival. Prison has become the LinkedIn of organized crime. Number 4. Organized crime also paradoxically fights terrorism. 
organized crime has a similar attitude toward terrorism as the average suburban HOA has toward maximum security prisons or wastewater treatment plant. NIMBAY or not in my backyard. They tolerate the idea to the extent that it isn't entirely avoidable but don't want if somewhere it can't be ignored. Basically, although terrorism provides some amount of supply and the demand for organized crime activities, it isn't exactly the lifeblood of the black market. So while they coexist and sometimes even collaborate, their interests are utterly not particularly compatible. Violent revolutions and ideological extremists aren't any better for the health of underground economics than those above ground. More to the point, terrorist attacks that threaten communities and the grassroots membership of organized crime groups create powerful enemies unbeholden to the rules of war of international human rights. Well, dear friends, it is in the second part of the video. I will present my personal opinion about uh, the four horrifying facts about the American Mafia. I am also encouraging you, the viewer, to share your personal opinions about the drug gangs that are basically fast food franchises about the organized crime that has lots of legitimate businesses and investments about the uh, they are used prisons to train and recruit members and yes about organized crime also paradoxically fights terrorism I am encouraging you, the viewer, to share your opinions related to these subjects because only this way we can grow a big and big, strong and vibrant community here on YouTube. Well, as always, I would like to thank all of you, the watchers, that are watching our videos from top to the end and that they are providing, that you are providing this extraordinary insight feedback for us. We are taking every comment and we are uh, reaching to you whenever it's possible. And as always, I'll encourage you to come each day to our channel for eight extraordinary clips that we are putting here each and every day, 365 days a year. Thank you very much. Thank you.